Today, boys and girls, we are going to learn how to set all the settings on a Casio CA53W calculator watch. And uh, if you watch at the end of the video, I'll show you how it compares to these other classic Casio watches. Well, these two are classic. This one eh, is debatable whether it's a classic, but let's get to this first. Now, before starting, I want you to pay attention to the top left of the number pad. Note that right about here in yellow goldish looking text it says ALM on off with a little arrow pointing to the 4. There's a reason for that is that if you ever forget how to enable or disable the alarm that it will literally tell you right on the number pad there. And the same thing goes for lap reset. There's also a PM on the period key. Also if we look to the right side of the number pad You'll see arrows for other functions and so on. It's all printed out. In matter of fact, there's only one function you may forget. And I will cover that in a moment. Uh, I forgot it, and I had to go to the manual for it, but that's it. What we are dealing with on the side here is what the manual will refer to as buttons A and B. The button A sticks out. It protrudes from the side of the case. Button B is a uh, recessed. First thing we'll do here is set the time. We do that by pressing button B, the recessed one. And when we do that, we start with blinking seconds. In order to make the seconds, when you're setting it to go exactly to the second, you would press zero like this. So you'll notice it goes back to zero. If it's past 30 seconds, it will advance one minute. So it would go to uh, 1047. As a matter of fact, I'll wait until it goes past 30 seconds. And then we I'll show you what happens when you press zero. Now, if I press zero to reset the seconds, it will advance one minute. Watch, there we go. So if I press the A button again, it goes to the hour. We can set AM or PM by pressing the period key. One really nice thing about the CA53, it has indicators for both AM and PM. Most Casio Digitals don't show this. It's nice that you have both. Now what we can do for the time is simply, you can type out the time right here. You don't have to go up and down. So if I wanted to say like 1050, just uh, 1050. And that's it. And it will automatically go to the next part, which is the date. We start with the year, which is uh, 2016, so I would just keep it as 1-6 and type in 1231 because I don't want to change the date. And then it goes back to the time setting screen again, and to exit this, you press the button B. Oh, actually, one more thing. This was the part that I uh, forgot. If I press set the time and go to the hour, how do I switch this to 24 hour time? This is done from the plus key, the very bottom right button, and I press it. You'll notice that the AM PM indicator disappears. That means that it is now in uh, 24 hour time. If I press it again, you'll see that the uh, anti-meridian, post-meridian will reappear. That is how you set 24 hour time. So again, you press button B, go to the hour by pressing button A once, and then hit the uh, bottom right key, which would be the plus key. So anyway, on the next part is the calculator. Calculator is pretty easy to uh, understand, but there is one thing you should know. If you want to mute the beeps, every key I press when doing calculations and every thing on the watch is going to beep. So if, if I do 7 times 7, and of course we get 49. You hear beeps every time I do that. So let me just zero that. Oh, but by the way, that's how to reset to zero, is to press button A. If I want to mute the beeps, you press the button B button once. And then what happens is that now you're not hearing any beeps. If you want to make the battery last as long as possible, Turn the beeps off. Now you'll notice when I go through the screens now, you're not hearing any beeps at all. So to re-enable, we go back to calculator and press button B again. And hear a beep, and that's it. So after calculator, we have alarm. Now the first thing people get messed up on is, how do you turn the alarm off? Button four. Again, it says ALM on off right here, and a little arrow pointing to four. So if you ever forget, just read the screen, uh, excuse me, read the uh, text on the number pad, that's all you have to do. You press it, 
you notice that the little indicator for alarm is gone. You press it again, it goes back on. Now for the hourly chime, same thing. But you will notice it says on the right side here, SIG on off with a little arrow pointing to the multiplication key. You press that, it goes off. You press it again, it goes on. The hourly chime is just a beep beep every at the top of every hour. That's all that it means. To set the alarm, we go to button B, starts to blink. Uh, again, remember AM, PM is adjusted with the uh, period key. So if I change that to AM, change to PM, whatever. And then just type out uh, what the alarm, there's only one alarm in this watch, it's not multi-alarm. So if I want to do say uh, 1 PM, just go 0100. And then I want it to be uh, 1 p.m., so I press period key, and that's it. You'll notice that the alarm indicator is out while the alarm is being set. That's normal. And then when we press this, it comes back. And we have dual time. Now, I have my dual time set to London time, which is uh, GMT. Setting it is exactly the same as setting the time. You would just hit button B and set it. It's the same thing. And the easy way to know if you're in dual time mode or not is just look for the DT. If you see the DT, you're on dual time screen. If not, uh, you're in regular timekeeping screen because it will show the weekday. Okay, stopwatch. That's easy enough to understand. Again, read the screen. You'll notice it says start stop with a little arrow pointing to the plus key. That means start stop now as far as where is the reset again read the screen lap slash reset with an arrow pointing to the zero resets finally we're going to get to how do you display the date top right key which would be the division key just press and hold so what happens is that it's showing the year month and the day you let it go and it goes back to time and that's it that's all you have to know now we're going to get to comparisons between this, 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 and this. There is some debate. Is this a nerdy watch? Is it a geeky watch? Is it a manly watch? Here are my thoughts on that. Let's talk about thickness first. The F91 and the A... Well, I'll say which models they are. these are. This is the CA53W. This is the F91W. This is the A158. This is the AE1000, one of several variants. It comes in different colors. This is the all black one. I have measured these using my vernier caliper and this is the results. It is widely reported on, widely misreported on a lot of websites that this is only seven millimeters thick. That's a lie. This is eight millimeters thick. I measured it myself. This is eight mils thick, which is still, you know, oh, by the way, that beep beep you just heard, that was the hourly chime that came from this. Okay, anyway, so this is eight mils thick. This is eight and a half mils thick. This is eight and a half mils thick. This is, uh, I forget, 14, okay, 14 mils thick, significantly thicker than the, but there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a moment. This has smaller digits than this. If you look close, you can see that the F91 type watches have digits that are larger than this. So if you want one that is, and this is, has the largest digits, does this mean this is the easiest to read? No, because of that bar at the top, it casts a shadow. The F91 and the A158 are actually the easiest to read out of all these four. This is actually thinner as in from side, it's the 9 to 3, compared to the F91 and A158. This is the widest of the four. So, uh, but the thing that this has an advantage of, although it is thinner, it is taller. So this actually will sit on the wrist better for a lot of people, even for uh, bigger folks, because uh, it, it has a slightly longer strap compared to the F91. And by slightly longer, I mean very slight. I mean only about... I want to say like a few millimeters at best. If you have really large wrists, this is probably not going to fit, but uh, it is easy to change the strap on. This is the original straps on all of these, by the way. If you want the watch that would be best for daily use, that can really take a knock, that is the most waterproof out of all these four, I would say get the AE1000. Okay, this is the AE1000 model. And the deal with this one is that, now you'll notice it looks kind of G-Shock-like. It is not a G-Shock. 
It has little wings on the bottom. Now, as thick as it is, the buttons on this thing are so easy to use. They're nice and big. They're very easy to press. The backlight is the, this by the way, has no backlight. That is a common complaint of the CA-53. There's no nightlight on this whatsoever. This has one, this has one. They both suck. Uh, not the watches themselves, but the backlight is terrible in both these. This one is good. It has one backlight at the bottom left. This has five alarms. This has a countdown timer. I'll show you. So you have world time, which I have set to UTC. Uh, you have time zone one, time zone two, time zone three, time zone four. And then you have world time, so you can have uh, five time zones displaying on this thing. You have one, two, three, four, five alarms on this thing. You have a countdown timer, which you can actually adjust by second. It doesn't have auto repeat, but still not bad. Uh, and then there's a stopwatch, which works identical to this one. It has the thickest strap, both in width and in just overall uh, bulk, I guess you could say. It is, this one will last the longest, no question about it. And also it looks the most masculine. Now, when we measure this without the buttons, uh, this thing measures at about a 44, just under 44 millimeters across. If you take it into account with the buttons, this is about, oh, hold on, I have to do it this off camera just so I can get it right. About 46 mil. Now, for some people to say, whoa, too big. No, not too big. The lug to lug measurement, which is ultimately what counts for sizing your wrist or not, you'll notice is, if I can, ah, I can't get that to focus, I'll just tell you, is about 46 millimeter. This is a fantastic design because this will fit most wrists. So if you want the one that's a safe bet, most masculine looking, get the AE-1000. I have a six and three quarter inch wrist, fits fine. These fit fine too, but if you want the one that's a little longer, you can wear the CA-53 and you can totally rock it. I do, it's fine. It's it, the best part about it, slim, very, very slim. Fits under any shirt cuff. There you go. Quick overview of how to set things on the CA-53 and some information on the other watches. So there you go.